Good afternoon and welcome to the Northwest Division A Table Topics and International Speech Contest. I have two very important announcements. The first, if it's, uh, is worth repeating, please turn off your cell phones or any other device that would potentially beep or tweet or cause some sort of distraction. At minimum, silence them, please. The other announcement is that the restrooms are located. Walk toward the elevator, past the elevator, and down that hall, they'll be on your right-hand side. That said, I would like to take a moment here. I have the privilege of introducing the Northwest Division Governor of District 30, John Labby. my remarks will be brief. <laughs> I hope that I am being heard in the back of the room. I would just like to say welcome, willkommen, bienvenue. Thank you for coming this afternoon. I have been to all of the area contests that brought us our contestants today, and I can tell you without reservation, we are going to have a heck of a show. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, this contest could not have happened without several very important people. All six of the area governors in this division have made very large contributions, and I would like each of you to stand as I recognize you. Area one, Dean Lawson. <laughs> Governor, you all know him, John Labby. 
starting with Area 1 Governor, Dean Glosson. <laughs> area 4 Area Governor, Iqbal Atcha. <laughs> area 5 Governor, Christina Parhas. <laughs> area B17 Governor, Denise Johnson.
Table Topics contestants. There will be one minute of silence between each contestant. Timekeepers, when I advise you to do so, please signal me with the green light when one minute is up. After all contestants have spoken, the judges will be given all the time they need to complete their ballots. We will now begin with the Table Topics Contest. Table Topics Contestant number one, Tom Pedrick. If you as president could pass one law for the entire country, what would it be? If you as president could pass one law for the entire country, what would it be? Tom Pedrick. to do that. The floor is passed. But it also means, if we go back in history, it means one thing. There's nothing in my hand. There's nothing up my sleeve. It means I am unarmed. I am not here. I am not here to harm you. It means I accept you. I accept you as a friend. I accept you in cases like today as a challenger, as a competitor. I would like, as president, to have a law that says, let's have a handshake day. Let's have a friendly day. Let's join ourselves as friends, as fellow countrymen, for decades, for generations. We have fought each other for one thing or another, north versus south, east versus west, Notre Dame versus, <laughs> and I'm sorry, there's some better rivalries down south, Texas versus Oklahoma, but wouldn't it be nice to have one day be the friendly day, one day where you can reach out to everyone and say, hello, I'm a friend. Hello, I'm a fellow American. Hello, I am not armed. It's not with a fist. Yeah, we're bumping fists today for one reason or another. But handshake day, friendly day, that's my new law. Thank you for making me president. <laughs> Contestants 
contestants number two, Alyssa Van Delden. If you as president could pass one law for the entire country, what would it be? If you as president could pass one law for the entire country, what would it be? Alyssa Van Delden. Mr. Contest Chair, fellow Toastmasters, and dignitaries. My name is Alyssa Van Delden from Palatine, Illinois. And the question, if the U.S. President could pass one law, what would that be? Well, I wish, I would have to say, unlimited funding. Because <laughs> as you guys know, the current situation we are in right now with the government and the sequestration that we're having, um, a lot of agencies are being forced to be uh, cut and reduce funding by 9.3%, I believe. Um, and that is definitely impacting um, a lot of the country. It's impacting <coughs> a lot of areas. It's impacting our education, our schools. It's impacting our defense operations, our national security. And uh, if there was just unlimited debt, uh, uh, excuse me, unlimited funding, I feel like that would just alleviate all of our problems. Now, we all know that that's very an unrealistic type of law. But uh, it's one that I would say would be, would be very important. Um, but uh, again, yeah, that's what I would kind of say in an unrealistic world. But today in a realistic world, I would have to give you a second answer. And that would be probably just more education. I think our younger uh, kids should have better education and should uh, pass, education should be available to all. Uh, basically the same, you know, no matter what area, what uh, group or you came from or uh, area you grew up in, uh, you know, basically education is very important. I think if we focus on education for the kids um, and starting young, I think that would be very beneficial. Ms. Toastmaster? Contestant number three. Contestant number three, Rose Schultz. If you, as president, could pass one law for the entire country, what would it be? If you, as president, could pass one law for the entire country, what would it be? Rose Schultz. challenging than it sounds off the bat because 
There's so many diversities, so many contrasts to people and to their beliefs and to their lifestyles that being nice isn't always easy. But I think that we need to be nice, and I don't want to pass along necessarily just to be nice and have everybody end up in jail because they just weren't nice and somebody took somebody else's coffee this morning and that's really not nice. I think if we could just do it on the honor system and learn to get along, I think that would be the ideal situation. Just be nice. <laughs> Contestant number four. Contestant number four, Jerry Evans. If you as president could pass one law for the entire country, what would it be? If you as president could pass one law for the entire country, what would it be? Jerry Evans. If I were President of the United States and I could pass one law, what would that law be? It would probably be a law that directed, or that directed towards people who didn't have really equal rights. Because even though we've got some genders where we talk about the sex as both male and female, and especially in a setting where I think that a lot of times men are given more prominence than women are, I like to pass a law to make sure that women are recognized more. Because a lot of times, especially in the workplace, they kind of get second class citizenship. And so I think that kind of bringing it more to the forefront of making it important for them to have equal pay, equal rights along with us males, I think that's a law that I like to see passed. Because even though we've evolved, over many, even when, when women got the vote, it took a lot of years to do that. So I like to see women get more rights because I think that sometimes we get favored status being males. And so for me, I like to get that law passed. And I think that that would further the cause of women in society today because we see more women, especially 52% of the work as are better, are in. Uh, positions of leadership and also more and more women are in prominent positions when it comes to leading corporations and also starting businesses today. So if I were President of the United States, that's the law that I'd like to see passed. Madam Toastmaster.
contestant number five, Marcus Rummer. If you, as president, could pass one law for the entire country, what would it be? If you, as president, could pass one law for the entire country, what would it be? Marcus Rummer. fellow members and honored guests, if I, Marcus Steve Rumbers, were president right now or in the future and had just one law to pass, I would pass a law involving hunting. Now, in this law, I would, say, I would create a law that would say that you can only carry a six-inch knife with you while you hunt because it's not very skillful to kill a 16-pound duck, a, a buck, with a semi-automatic weapon. I believe that if you're going to hunt, you need to maintain the integrity. So my rule would be, whatever you could kill with a six-inch six knife, that is what you could take home as your game. Now, I know a lot of people like to go hunting, and that it has a lot of tradition in our country and in other countries. But what I've seen lately in the news is that people are taking automatic weapons and a lot of guns, and they're just spraying bullet after bullet after bullet. And I'm a firm believer in maintaining the integrity of, of such an historic competition and just hunting in general. So again, I'm not talking about having a long sword or a semi-automatic weapon or a sniper. I'm talking about something that actually requires a lot of skill. This requires you to get up close in person with that animal. <laughs> <laughs> now I, I know you may laugh, but it will really make you think twice. <laughs> this deer. And that's the whole point. I'm trying to bring integrity back into hunting, and I'm trying to make people think twice before they kill an animal. Now, I'm not against hunting. Like I said before, I'm trying to bring integrity back into hunting, and I would like skillful hunters out there so that when you do strike an animal down, that you know that you were skilled and that you weren't just spraying bullet after bullet after bullet. <clears throat> so, to conclude, my rule, you get a six-inch knife, you're out in the terrain, you're hunting, that is the only thing you get to hunt that animal. Thank you. My name is Marcus Rumbers. Thank you, everyone. Contestant number six. Contestant number six, Liz Kistner. If you, as president, could pass one law for the entire country, what would it be? If you, as president, could pass one law for the entire country, what would it be? Liz Kistner. Being a squirrel is really cool. 
I can suck down a corn on the cob in a matter of seconds. I can scratch out your eyes before you say, holy shit. <laughs> Being a squirrel is awesome. I can go to the bathroom anywhere in the world. I'm lickety split. I'm so quick. Except my cousin Carl. He wasn't so quick. He, he got run over by a car. It, it's pretty gruesome looking at him. He's out there in the street. I, as his first cousin, am obligated to go get his body. Take it to the forest behind the tree. If you'd like to come with me, the funeral's tomorrow. Being a squirrel. Hey, that's pretty cool, isn't it? Laws? We don't have any laws. The only laws that we have are to protect our nuts. <laughs> <laughs> Postmaster, the ballots have been collected. Yeah. 
I was going to come up here and talk about this. <laughs> I practiced my table topic skills for this briefing. I'm not really sure what I'm supposed to talk about, so I'm just going to make something up. But it's not going to be about nuts. Unless, <laughs> not, properly, unless you wanted to eat some nuts at the spring conference, which is what I'm going to talk about. So at the spring conference, which is April 26th and 27th, Friday and Saturday, I know you can't wait to get there. It's in Skokie. I know you're thinking, why would I go there? Why would I drive to Skokie? Aside from being able to buy nuts at the mall across the street from the Holiday Inn and looking out the window to see all the nuts driving by in the parking lot, what else could possibly happen there? Well, first of all, the winners of this division contest will be there to compete for the district crown in table topics and international speech. We have a couple formal winners in the room, actually, who can tell you all about it. Now, here's something else that's really interesting. One of those international speech contestant winners from our district will have the chance to go, guess where, somewhere exotic for the international contest? Friday! <laughs> Cincinnati! Cincinnati! <laughs>
individual is known as the Queen of Clubs. Please join me in welcoming Lieutenant Governor of Marketing, Donna Weston. <laughs> Help you get members in your 
Just try them out. All right. Go take it.